Uh, just a few questions, Mr. Slater. So the night of the murder set in motion a sequence of events that cost you your wife, the mother of your children. That's not a question. Now that she's gone, you feel like you've lost everything. Isn't yes, that everything. right? Huh. And where is she now? I don't know. So whom, I, I have to wonder, do you blame for your misfortunes? I object, Your Honor. Mr. Slater's marriage has nothing to do with this case. Objection sustained. This is not a divorce court, Ms. Colby. I'll rephrase. Judge, do you blame Adam Chandler for your misfortunes? No, not Adam. Well, then who? I blame myself for not seeing what was right in front of me. I thought it was Kendall, but she was never there. We're done here. Yes, we are. We'll take a brief break, then closing arguments. Hey, listen, I'm sorry. I had to destroy Willis's argument. I couldn't let the jury think that Adam knew all along. I wanted to prove that you had a grudge against him. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to hurt you any more than I know that you're already hurting. I would like to take this opportunity to ask you guys to stay out of my life. Zach lost his wife. I lost my daughter. And you're going to let Adam and Annie off? Uh, that's, that's not the way that I see You know as well as I do that Adam must have some grand scheme to get Annie free. Or are you going to finally feel like the fool you really are when you realize he's been working you just the way he's been working everybody else? You are so wrong about Adam. He is going to help me in a way no other man has, with great sacrifice to himself. So I was right. There is a plan. You know what, Ryan? You can go now. Adam is going to walk free from this, and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Maybe not. Maybe not. But you will never, ever get full custody of Emma. It doesn't matter what any jury says or which judge Adam pays off, you will have to kill me before I let her go. So the night of the murder, Adam Chandler was a sad, drug-addled man. He was attacked by everyone close to him. Ex-wives, a bitter son, an angry couple who blamed him for their son's death. And that night, they all stormed the house, intending to do him harm. But did he hate them? No. Adam Chandler hated himself and what he had become. So in his drug-infused haze, he fired that gun at his own image. But did the bullet take him down? No. It took down his other half. A man he had always felt was a part of him. The only man that actually loved him unequivocally his dear twin brother, Stuart. So he blocked that waking nightmare. He buried it so deep until one day it all came flooding back, so horrific, so dark, that he tried to take his own life again. If Adam Chandler had not been drugged that night, his brother would still be alive. Adam's going to pay for that for the rest of his life, no matter what you decide here. But forgiveness and mercy? Well, that's in your hands alone. Forgiveness. Mercy. Those are useful words in the sentencing phase of a trial. But you are here now to determine guilt or innocence. And you must know, in that place in your heart that knows the truth, though he weeps for the brother he killed, 
There is nothing innocent about Adam Chandler.